Hi guys and welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about Python functions. So over the past couple of weeks, we've been creating various Python tutorials for beginners. We've talked about concepts such as uh, loops, both for loops and while loops. We've talked about if, l if, else. We've talked about uh, how to create Python functions, Python inputs, among other concepts. Please feel free to go and watch all the videos or the videos that came before this that are relevant to you. Also note that some of the concepts, if not all of the concepts that I'm going to be using today to cover Python functions, are concepts that we've already covered uh, in earlier videos. So if you're totally new to Python, this is your first interaction with Python, the, your first interaction with my videos, please feel free to watch initial videos that way you can easily flow through this tutorial and understand what is going on so yeah uh, let me start by introducing uh, what are <clears throat> what are python functions and what type of python functions do we have so to me python functions are just basically containers they help me store probably uh, formula among other things in one container that way if I want to reuse that formula on a different set of numbers I can quickly do it without having to rewrite the whole calculation since the calculation is already stored in the function so whatever functions do we have we have inbuilt functions we have um, anonymous functions and user-defined functions. So user-defined functions is what I'm going to cover for this specific video. And you'll see how you can define your own function as a Python user. Inbuilt functions, just from the name, are inbuilt. Things like when you want to calculate sum, when you want to calculate max, mean, the length of a string or a list, you can use the len function and anonymous functions. This is Python Lambda. I'm going to cover that in the video that comes after this, which is the last video for this series. And on that note, please, if you found this series helpful, this video is helpful, they've you know, helped you understand various Python concepts, please feel free to like this video, put some comments down below and also subscribe. You know, if you're interested in completing this series, starting a whole other series with me, subscribe that way when I create a new video, you will always know. And also, uh, since we're coming to the end of this, um, to this series, oh, I'm so excited that we are going to do the first uh, Python portfolio, portfolio project for data analysis in this channel. So after the Lambda, after the Lambda video, the next one is going to be, the next video we're going to upload is a project, then we probably start another series or do projects before, to, to, do two projects before we start another series, but you just expect a project and I'm really excited about that, hence why you should feel free to subscribe so that you're always aware of what I am churning out. And secondly, comments like, what do you want me to cover in the project? Is there a specific industry that you'd like to see me, like a specifically a specific industry data set that you want me to use in that project? Just let me know so that before that video, I can incorporate everything you guys would like to see. Anyway, so that's it on extra things and the various types of functions and what a function actually is. Let's get started. So we're going to define, so whenever you're defining a function, you use the keyword, Def, yeah, so define. Uh, so we're going to call this function who name, yeah, and it will have two parameters, and the proxies are going to be x, comma, y. Then what do we want to do with them? We want to print uh, once you input your x, your actual x and y, you want to print x and concatenate it with y, but you want a space in between the two um, with concatenate it with y, and you want a space in between. So here you're just creating the function, so nothing is really going to happen. So the next thing we'll do is actually call that function. So um, what is my full name? My full name is Stacy. Some more. So Stacy X is the actual X and Samoy is the actual Y. So when you run this, you're going to get 
Stacy Samuel, con Cadidita de la Space. Let's say, let's say someone else's whose name is. Uh, what name? Let's say Lisa. Myra. Lisa Myra. So you, you see how, uh, what is this called? You see how this function has made your life easier or else you'd probably have to do something like, like let's say, um, let's say F for first name is equals to, I'm just showing you guys the longer root and then second name is equals, equals to, Samoy, then you'd have to do print f underscore name plus you want it to space. Oh, uh, it's last name here. Yeah. So imagine every time you want to like print out first and last name for a different name, you have to create a new variable to hold. Lisa, then Myra, then you print it. That's just a lot of work and it's not a very efficient way to write your code. So you just call, you just create your function, which is already doing this for you here. And you just call it. So full name, put the full name, it will print out full name, put the full name, you print out. So now the next example I want us to do will also incorporate age, which is a different uh, data type. So <clears throat> in case you're not familiar with Python data types, I have a video on that. Feel free to go and check it out. So here we're going to add a third variable Z. And because there are different, different data types, so age and name, and name is string, age is an integer, you can't concatenate um, you can't concatenate uh, variables with, uh, we're going to, yeah, we're going to name variables which have different data types. So let's create that full name age, then let's call it name age. And it's going to be Stacy. more and let's say um 34 so this is somewhere 34 and yeah those are two examples that i really hope have helped you understand how to create a function so yeah let's do another one and this time uh we're going to create a function that stores the formula for calculating the percentage of something so again the keyword def so we'll call this percent, percent n, yeah? And it's going to have two parameters, x comma y. And we're going to have, what do we want to do with x comma y? We want to print again into brackets, x over y. So let me use s representing small or d n representing numerator, d representing denominator. And, and I guess on that note, I can just talk about how to name variables. So it's, I'm using very basic, uh, I'm using very basic, I'm just using letters to name a variable, but you'll find yourself writing, like doing different pieces of work, yeah? And if you just name a variable x, y, z, when you come back, you might not remember, what is this x, what is this y? So it's good to name your variable with something that you'll actually remember. So you can actually write numerator, denominator instead of n over d. But for the purposes of this video, to keep it short and quick, and that's why I'm using letters. But for you, use more meaningful names for this various parameters and functions that you're creating. So percentage n, or do you want to say percentage of, I don't know, percentage of whatever percentages you are likely to use. But percentage n makes sense for me because n can, yeah, yeah, let me not have a talk. You get the point. So, I'll teach you, so what will happen when you put in your numerator and your denominator, it will do the numerator divided by the denominator times 100. 
So let's create that function. I just have to, you know, change things up instead of always calling it inside at first. Let's call it next. So percent underscore n. Let's say you bought a basket of fruits and you and you have eleven apples out of um, two hundred and eighty fruits that you rare you bought. So you want to know the apples cover what percent? That's three point nine. So imagine like if you had to okay now you want to know the percentage of bananas in that basket of fruits and you have 50 bananas and the basket has 280 you see how you see how functions make your life easier like you don't have to redo like 11 divided by 28 or if if banana if you actually did uh, apple is equals to 11 banana is equals to 50 you don't have to do banana divide by count apple divide by the total count no 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 you just put in quick 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 you know like functions really do make your life easier so the next last example i'm going to cover is i'm going to use uh for loop to get uh the sum so let's call the, so we are defining this function is going to be called let's just call it uh df uh, gy yeah and it's going to take a list yeah and we're going to have let's say total which is equals to zero so that's our starting point for this for loop so for x in list yeah total uh, I think it's always plus equals x, yeah. Uh, then you need to return total. So let's create this. Uh -huh. And then if we have jy and our list as two, three, four, five, six, nine, yes, nine, that's eight. Let's see what's going to happen. So it's summing it, yeah? So let's do another example before I go back up and explain what is happening here. So let's do first two numbers, 400, what do you get? 600. So what's happening here is, Mm, we have a list and let's use this one. Our list has 200 and 400. And you want to get the total of all the items in your list. So what will you do? You'll do for X in list, of which X is the first item in this list is 200. So we'll do, okay, let me see. So for people who've already watched, who've watched my video on while loops and for loops, total plus equals is, a, is similar to total is equals to total plus x. So this, this is just a short form of writing this. So as I was saying, for x in list, our list is 200, 401 to iterate, iterate through this list, which will be for x in list, so this is 200. We take 200 plus the total, which is zero, so now we have 200. Then we come back again and we are like, the total is now 200 <clears throat> plus X, which is 400. So now the total is 600 and you get a total of 600. And that's the same thing that's happening here. When we start, total is zero. Yeah? So for X in list, total is zero, X is equals to two. So now total is two. When you come again, total is two plus three, that's five. Then we come again, we keep on iterating till we add all these numbers on this list to itself. So that's basically how what this function here is doing. So then again, this was just to again showcase how functions work and you can really be creative and do anything and everything that is within the rules of Python inside your uh your functions that can get very complex. And I guess that's the complexity of it is doing things that seem so impossible in such a simple way, I hope I've made sense. I hope I've made sense because there are questions that I've had to answer. Like, like I get a project, I need to answer such a question and the question seems impossible, but 
you'll be shocked by how just taking the simple, the fundamentals of bit Python, bit SQL, and putting them together creatively can answer for you questions that seem so complex in such a simple way. And you'll just be like, whoa, this is amazing. But yeah, so the intention of this was to just, you know, further illustrate how functions work. But in real sense, there's an inbuilt function sum which can do this for you and you really don't have to write all this. But in case you had to write all this, I guess, I guess, I, at least you write it once and you just call the function and it does what it needs to be done. But yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. Please remember to like, comment, put, comment if you have anything you'd like to say about this video. If you liked it, what you'd like me to talk about again, what tutorials would you like me to create, put them down below and don't forget to, to subscribe. Remember, the first uh, Python portfolio project uh, for this channel is coming soon. Oh, I cannot wait. So we're just going to do the Python uh, Lambda functions video. And then after that, the next thing is a project. Otherwise, guys, yeah, as usual, this was nice. This was fun. Uh, yeah, I get to <clears throat> share my knowledge, learn, grow, study for my master's you know what more could I ask for so yeah that's it for me thank you so much guys and see you in the next one